Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. And we, we begin tonight with the latest COVID-19 update for Bear County. City officials announcing 1,684 new cases today and 18 new deaths. In addition, 1,375 people are in local hospitals tonight, 174 of which were admitted in the last 24 hours. 414 remain in the ICU and 252 are on ventilators. We have been following a number of reported problems surrounding the vaccine distribution at the Alamo Dome and tonight city leaders addressing some of those issues head on. During tonight's daily COVID-19 briefing, city officials laid out modifications being made to the 311 phone systems for people scheduling appointments for their second dose of the vaccine. The night team's Jonathan Cotto tells us what you can expect to do if you're still waiting your next appointment. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg says those who got their first dose of the vaccine before January 13th at the Alamo Dome will be contacted soon, so there's no need to continue calling and tying up phone lines. Metro Health will reach out to you via phone or email to provide you with an appointment time for your second dose. Nirenberg says there is a 21 to 28 day window to receive your second dose, adding every effort will be made to meet that interval of time. You can still receive your second dose later than that window, uh, but we will be working very hard to make sure everyone gets it uh, in the time frame it was prescribed. Many of those awaiting second doses will be scheduled for the month of February. The mayor encourages those who don't get a call two days prior to their allotted time frame to call 311 option 8 and select the newly added feature specifically for second appointments to be assisted. Tim, Courtney, this is the process that's in place. The modification has been made to facilitate the scheduling. However, the mayor says if you're in that, that early on time frame of the 21, 28 days, not to fret, he assures you will be contacted. For those who received their first doses through WellMed or University Health, the second dose appointment should have been scheduled that same day. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. For those still needing to schedule your first dose, uh, you can still contact 311 if you're eligible, but you should also know that the reservation hotline for the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine being distributed by WellMed will reopen next week. The reservations will be for the clinics at the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Activity Center and the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior One Stop Center. The hotline will reopen next Saturday, January 30th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The numbers on your screen, 833-968-1745. Appointments will begin again in February. Well, in case you didn't hear, Fiesta Oyster Bake at St. Mary's University has been canceled once again. The St. Mary's University Alumni Association announced the event will not take place in 2021, despite hopes that a normal Fiesta season would return. A statement from the association president pointed to the substantial numbers of COVID-19 cases in our region. The tradition is set to resume in April of next year. As for the rest of the annual Fiesta events, the Fiesta Commission, along with the city and county leaders, are expected to announce a decision next week. Taking a look outside with live cam, really not a whole lot to see here. We're at 410 near the airports. You can see the Whataburger sign, though, like a, like a beacon in the foggy nights. <laughs> you still see the Whataburger sign there. Uh, it has turned into a really damp, foggy night for us. Uh, and at the airport, we're reading 60 degrees. That's about where our dew point is. Winds are calm. That's a great recipe for some fog. We've also got some very low clouds producing drizzle out there tonight. And here's a look at current visibility readings uh, across the metro. These numbers have really started to drop. We've got some spots uh, well below one mile visibility starting to approach zero mile visibility. So a dense fog advisory will be in effect overnight through 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. We're keeping the clouds around the drizzle as well. Temperatures will stay pretty stagnant through early tomorrow uh, because of all this moisture that we've got in place. So tomorrow, another damp day, but the sun will return by early Monday. We'll talk about that. Get you ready for the rest of the weekend coming up, Tim. Katie, returning now to our coronavirus coverage, more than 417,000 American lives have been lost to COVID-19 since the first case was reported in the U.S. just over a year ago. Efforts to get Americans vaccinated are sputtering with many states running out of supplies of both available vaccines. But there could see, soon be a third vaccine available. Here's ABC's Ty Hernandez with the details. 
January is on track to be the deadliest month of the coronavirus pandemic so far. On average this week, one American death from COVID-19 was reported every 30 seconds. Florida reporting a record-tying 277 deaths Friday, along with 14,000 new cases. And now new concerns about the UK variant, with some British officials warning it could be up to 30 percent more deadly. Scientists are stressing more research is needed on whether the variant is deadlier. Even if the virus uh, ended up not being any more deadly, the fact that it is more contagious means it's going to end up infecting a lot more people. It's going to cause more hospitalizations and a lot more deaths. Meanwhile, the push to get people vaccinated is growing more urgent. Over the past two days, a record three million vaccines have been administered. But across the country, many states are struggling to meet demand. The supply should be steadily increasing. And what, what I'm concerned about in particular is making sure that we have enough distribution channels set up. Because if we don't set those up, then we'll be in a place in perhaps a month or so where we're sitting on too much supply uh, at a time when many people want to get the vaccine but can't. University Medical Center in El Paso, Texas, received 5,000 more doses of Moderna's vaccine. Appointments for those shots were booked within five minutes of being posted online. California opened the nation's largest mass vaccine site at Dodger Stadium, but still the state ranks near the bottom of the list in percent of available shots administered. New York canceling thousands of appointments after running out of vaccines, the next shipment not coming until next week. We need more vaccine and we need it now. A third vaccine option could soon be available. Johnson & Johnson's one-shot vaccine may be ready for emergency use authorization in two weeks. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Turning now to the investigation into the siege of our nation's capital, one of the Texans charged in connection with the riot is accused of threatening Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and a Capitol Police officer. Court documents show Garrett Miller is facing five criminal charges, which includes making death threats. Miller allegedly tweeted, assassinate AOC, and is also accused of posting about the police officer who fatally shot a Trump supporter during the attack. Documents show he posted the officer, quote, deserves to die and won't survive long because it's, quote, hunting season. Miller was arrested on Wednesday, according to the Justice Department. Federal prosecutors want him to stay in jail until his trial. A court hearing is scheduled for Monday. Authorities also have arrested 22-year-old Nolan Bernard Cook from North Texas, who investigators say posted videos on social media showing him taking part in the Capitol riot. That's according to an FBI affidavit. You can read more right now on KSAT.com. Back here at home, taking a look at other stories we've been following today. Police say a man is recovering tonight after he was shot during a brawl over on the northeast side. It all happened around 2 a.m. in the 1100 block of Mason Street. Officers tell us the victim, a man in his early 20s, told them he was involved in a large fight which escalated into the shooting. He was shot in the lower body and was left on the street. Police say three suspects took off in a dark colored SUV. The victim was picked up by a passerby and taken to the hospital. To another shooting, we're still awaiting the identity denied of a victim. Police say was shot and killed near downtown last night. The shooting happened around 9 p.m. in the 1900 block of Hayes Street. When police got there, they found a vehicle with two people inside with multiple gunshot wounds. Police believe the suspect or suspects fired off several shots and then left the scene. The passenger was pronounced dead. The driver taken to the hospital in critical condition. We're still working to find out their their current condition. No arrests have been made and no suspect descriptions have been given. How does a summer or fall vacation sound? As the vaccines roll out, it seems interest in air travel is taking off again. But are there any good deals? And what if you're not sure you'll even want to get on a plane over the summer? 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moore, it says consumers have a lot going for them right now. With hope on the horizon, Sammy Munoz already has a summer vacay on the calendar. We're going to Michigan. My wife's from Michigan, so we're going to Michigan. Call it pent up wanderlust. Travel experts say they already are seeing a boost in bookings for late this year and next. I think 2021 and especially in the summer and onward, could be one of the biggest travel times that we've seen in, in, in years. Even though there's still a lot of pandemic uncertainty, travel pro Scott Kai says if you want to fly, book it. Rather than waiting until, let's say, May or June to book your summer flights, 
What I'm recommending to folks is actually look about booking those fares now. After all, the airlines are offering unprecedented flexibility to change your mind and dates. For basic economy, though, leniency may end in March. But with airlines facing financial turbulence, will they be offering discounted fares? In other words, can you get a deal? Oh, absolutely. Kai says he's already seeing cheap flights. We've seen fares from San Antonio to Belize for 286 bucks round trip. Fares from San Antonio to Hawaii for $316 round trip. As demand takes off, he expects airlines to add more flights and compete for those leisure dollars. Expect travel to look different though. Mask mandates likely to continue at least through this year and some foreign destinations when open may require proof of vaccine. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. President Trump may have left office, but he's still making headlines. Just this morning, the New York Times reported new allegations related to the former president's second impeachment trial. The latest next. As the Senate prepares for former President Trump's second impeachment trial, the New York Times is reporting Trump is being accused of discussing plans with Justice Department officials to overturn the election while he was still in office. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimpert with all the details. The date of former President Trump's second impeachment trial is now set to begin the week of February 8th, more than a month after the violent attack on Capitol Hill. We have to address that and make sure it never happens again. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will send over the article of impeachment on Monday. According to the Constitution, the Senate trial will begin at 1 p.m. the next day. Senators will still be sworn in as jurors on Tuesday, but both sides will then have two weeks to prepare. During that period, the Senate will continue to do other business for the American people, such as cabinet nominations and the COVID relief bill, which would provide relief for millions of Americans who are suffering during this pandemic. And now Trump is reportedly being accused of discussing plans with Justice Department officials to overturn the election while he was still in office. In a stunning report by the New York Times citing unnamed sources, Trump allegedly discussed removing acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen in order to execute a plan to pressure Georgia officials to flip the state's presidential election results. The man who reportedly worked on the plan, lawyer Jeffrey Clark, the Times reporting Trump allegedly mulled over whether to fire the acting AG and replace him with Clark because Rosen refused Trump's request to carry out the alleged scheme. According to the Times, Trump decided against firing Rosen only after top Justice Department officials threatened mass resignations. Clark telling the Times their report contained inaccuracies and that all of his official communications were consistent with the law. Trump declined to comment, according to the report. The latest report could have an impact on the former president's upcoming impeachment trial. Both Rosen and Clark could be called as witnesses. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington, D.C. Had a brief taste of spring yesterday. Lots of beautiful sunshine out oh, there yeah. and then whew, gone. And then the haze of rain and drizzle. <laughs> yeah. Socked back in. Not even rain, though, really. I mean, it's been annoying it, drizzle. <laughs> exactly. Yes, the, the it's light enough that you like wouldn't really need an umbrella or anything, but you need to run your windshield wipers pretty consistently. <laughs> uh, so we've got the drizzle. Yes, we've also got some dense fog developing. Here's a look at visibility now down at the airport. It is down below a quarter of a mile starting to drop down near a quarter of a mile in a lot of spots. So this fog has really started to become more widespread and dense just over the past couple of hours. This is the view at the airport. So we've got the fog uh, that visibility um, is going to cause, you know, some slowdowns on the roadways. And while the drizzle today hasn't made our roads very wet while there's no standing water. Uh, certainly roads are a little damp, so if you must be out late tonight, uh, even into the day tomorrow, just make sure you're taking it easy on the roads and make sure you use those low beams when you encounter low visibility, low beams for low visibility. Tonight, temperatures don't move much. We'll hover right around 60 degrees, upper 50s, low 60s, foggy, damp and drizzly all through the overnight and through much of the day tomorrow. So tomorrow will be another uh, gray, damp, kind of gloomy day for us with more of 
that drizzle and light rain around and also some fog mainly through the first part of the day. But we will see a warm up tomorrow as a warm front lifts north through the area. So that'll put our temperatures tomorrow afternoon in the low 70s. Not expecting a whole lot of sun though. So even though we'll be stuck under more clouds tomorrow, uh, it will be a touch warmer. Here's our big setup. We've got a storm system spinning over Southern California. This is tossing us some mid and upper level moisture. We've also got a lot of moisture at the surface. So we're very, very saturated uh, here, not only in South Texas, but also across a good portion of the Lone Star State. Tomorrow, the storm system is still going to be off to our west, so nothing to really shake up our weather. That's why we're in for another gloomy day tomorrow. But late tomorrow night into early Monday, that low will move off to our east. It will bring a Pacific cold front through, so we'll see some clearing early in the day Monday. Also a nice drop in our humidity to kind of clear out all this mugginess and nastiness that we've got in place this weekend. Temperatures mid to upper 50s in the hill country, mid 60s down near the Gulf of Mexico. Our dew point numbers are also kind of right there with our air temperatures, so we're very saturated. Our winds are light. That's why we've got the fog developing, uh, starting to again become quite dense in spots, reading zero mile visibility in Beeville, also zero mile visibility in Rock Springs. So the Weather Service has gone ahead and issued a dense fog advisory. For these counties in gray through 10 a.m. tomorrow, I would not be surprised to see essentially our entire viewing area under a dense fog advisory tonight through early tomorrow morning. So again, if you've got to be out early tomorrow, we're going to have some some damp roads because of the drizzle and light showers. Also reduce visibility because of the fog. So please take it easy if you've got to be out on the roads tomorrow. Back half of the day tomorrow, we do stay cloudy. There could be some lingering sprinkles around, uh, but I think as far as uh, any light shower activity in that drizzle. It's going to be mainly confined to the first part of the day as future cast illustrates through early tomorrow morning. As we get into the afternoon, any light showers and drizzle that should start to ease up just a little bit, but we will stay cloudy and muggy under this deck of clouds all the way through early Monday. Here comes that weak front early Monday. That's going to really clear things out for us and we'll start to see plenty of sunshine uh, by mid morning on Monday. Also a big drop in humidity there to start the work in school week and overall next week looks pretty nice. We'll keep checking on visibility throughout the rest of the hour. Keep a close eye on the roadways for you too. And another look at the forecast coming up guys. Thank you so much, Katie. Mm -hmm. Spurs really had their hands full with the Mavs, Larry. Yeah, in particular, Luka Doncic. I'm telling you what, he just makes the game look so easy. He's got 30 triple doubles in his short career, five on the season, and he almost had another last night. Plus, UTSA Hoops going for a weekend sweep of Southern Miss coming up. I think he's going to be fine. Don't expect him to miss any time. I think he's going to be fine. That was Pop's reaction when asked about the severity of DeJounte Murray's ankle injury in big board sports. Losing point guard DeJounte Murray one minute into the game with the left ankle sprain last night certainly put the Spurs behind the eight ball. It really hurt their perimeter defense. The Spurs trailed by as many as 18 in the second quarter, but clawed back within one with a minute left in the game only to lose 122 to 117. Pop said he was proud of the way his guys fought back. But in the end, Luka Doncic was just too much for the Spurs. He had 36 points, 11 assists, and nine rebounds to lead Dallas. In the last three games, the Spurs had to defend Damian Lillard, Steph Curry, and Luka. For big man LaMarcus Aldridge trying to stop those guys off a pick and roll, it's brutal. Man, it's, it's tough. You know, you're just trying to force them to take a tough shot you know, uh, force them to have to make some decisions and, you know, hopefully turn it over. You know, we, you know, were there all night on uh, Luca. He, he made some tough shots, you know, even at that one late, uh, you know, in the uh, fourth on me, you know, I cut him off, he stops, he spins, goes glass. I mean, you know, that's, that's, you know, I, I can't be mad about that shot because, you know, I was there, I was in front of him and, you know, he just made, you know, a good shot. Bad stat of the night, the Spurs trailed by 15 plus points for the fifth time this season, and they've lost each of those games. Up next for the Spurs, the Washington Wizards, and we're not exactly sure what to expect from them. They've had six straight games canceled after beating Phoenix January 11th due to COVID-19. Six Washington players have tested positive for the coronavirus, and three other players were sidelined after contact tracing. After more than a week off, they finally returned to practice on Wednesday. I know one thing we're gonna get great effort, uh, we know we haven't played in, you know, two weeks. That's a long time. 
Uh, that's a very long time. Uh, but there's no excuses. We're, we're excited to play. We're going to go out there and give a great effort. We're going to give ourselves a chance to uh, to compete. And, and I think it's going to come down to we get, we got to – there's going to be some rust. I know that. Brooks also said he's not sure if guard Russell Westbrook, who's coming back from a quad injury, will face the Spurs. Coach said Russ is trending in the right direction. So the Spurs will host the Wizards tomorrow night at 7 at the AT&T Center. UTSA men played at home trying to sweep a two-game series against Southern Miss, and it was raining three-pointers at the Convocation Center. First half, Keaton Wallace feeds freshman Jordan Ivy Curry from downtown. Curry made a career-high three three-pointers. Roadrunners led 42-36 at half. Second half, tied at 45. Javon Jackson fakes a three. Defender flies by, and then he buries a three, and the Roadrunners go up 48-45, giving him a game-high 24 points. 35 seconds later, Wallace... Gets free for a corner three for three of his 12. Roadrunners take it 78-72, hitting 13 triples. In Big 12 play, number two Baylor at Oklahoma State. First half, ball goes inside to Caleb Boone for some jam. The Cowboys led by as many as six and 36-32 at halftime. The Bears' largest hold half this season. Second half, Bears up three and pulling away. Jared Butler for three, then another three from the wing. And how about one more from the other side? He scored 22 points, and the Bears win 81-66. to We had a top-10 upset in Norman, Kansas at Oklahoma. Second half, Emoji Gibson steals the ball from Kansas, and he goes coast-to-coast with a layup and three-point lead. He scored 10 off the bench, and the Sooners upset number nine, Kansas, 75-68. to The Jayhawks' third straight loss. And coming up later in sports, we had an instant classic today between Taft and Harlan in girls high school basketball. Guys, we'll look forward to it. Thank you very much, Larry. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Broadcasting legend Larry King passed away today at the age of 87. The television and radio host conducted an estimated 50,000 interviews during his career and today is being remembered by his colleagues and many of the newsmakers he interviewed over the years. Here's ABC's Alex Perche with a look at the legendary career of Larry King. Tributes pouring in on social media for broadcasting legend Larry King following the news of his death. Christy Alley writing, one of the only talk show hosts who let you talk, his colleagues remembering him as well. CNN's Jim Acosta tweeting, he will be missed by so many CNN employees past and present. Wearing his trademark suspenders, Larry King became a fixture on CNN back in 1985. This is the premier edition of Larry King Live. Becoming the reigning king of the television interview. Interviewing world leaders. First, you still like this job? Oh, uh, the, this is uh, the best job on earth. I mean, it's uh, it's an extraordinary privilege. To Celebrities and, and countless others. An estimated 50,000 interviews during his entire career. <laughs> Signing off for the last time in 2010 after 25 years on CNN. Uh, good evening and welcome to the last Larry King Live. Born in Brooklyn in 1933, King set the Guinness World Record for the longest running show in the same time slot on the same network. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo writing on Twitter, Larry King was a Brooklyn boy who became a newsman who interviewed the newsmakers. Married eight times to seven women, his final and longest marriage to Sean King. Over the years, King battled a number of health issues, including a heart attack, lung and prostate cancer, and a near fatal stroke that left him in a coma for two weeks in 2019. His family says he was hospitalized after Christmas and passed away Saturday at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. And I'd like to be remembered as someone who greatly contributed to the profession he chose to be in. And if he made it a drop better by his being there. Larry King was 87. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. More coronavirus coverage now. The largest retailer in the U.S. planning to expand its COVID-19 vaccine distribution efforts. Walmart has been administering vaccines in some of its locations in New Mexico and Arkansas. Now the company will roll out the vaccine to select stores here in Texas, New Jersey, Georgia, and several other states. The vaccine will only be available to designated groups at Walmart pharmacies. The move comes as President Joe Biden and his administration seek to accelerate vaccine distribution. Walmart said it expects to be able to administer 10 to 13 million doses per month. 
United Airlines may soon require all of its workers to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The airline CEO reportedly told employees they should expect it to become a mandate. But he added other companies also have to get on board with mandatory vaccines. Airlines and their unions have lobbied to get their essential employees early on the vaccine distribution lists. Scam alert to let you know about. It's about packages you probably didn't order. The Federal Trade Commission is warning consumers about deliveries known as brushing scams. Here's how they work. Third party sellers on Amazon, eBay and other online marketplaces pay people to write fake positive reviews about their products. The so-called brushers then trick the site into making it appear a legitimate transaction took place. They'll then use a fake account to place orders and address them to a random person whose name and address they find online. Then, instead of actually mailing the item for which they want to post a review, the brushers will send a cheap, often lightweight item that costs less to ship. And then you go, what is this? <laughs> They're always so random, too. But be careful if you get something you didn't really order. Check that somebody, like your friends, didn't exactly. send you something accidentally. <laughs> Not always brushing. It happened to us. <laughs> Still ahead, being, uh, bringing pro sports to San Antonio, our Greg Simmons steps into the breakdown booth to discuss our city's struggle for success. Over the past several years, you've no doubt heard headlines and read stories about San Antonio's efforts to attract another major pro sports team here. So far, those efforts haven't really been very successful. That was the topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains, and someone who's been around to see all the ups and downs unfold is, of course, our longtime sports director and anchor, Greg Simmons. Tonight, he steps into the breakdown booth to share what that's been like. Hi, this is Greg Simmons, and I've been fortunate to work here at KSAT 12 for the last 40 years, going on 41 now. And before that, I was in radio um, in this market for another eight years. And that said, it gave me a front row seat to seeing sports develop here in the Alamo City, starting as far back as when the Spurs, the old Dallas Chaparrales, moved to San Antonio and set up shop here, getting to see the birth of the NBA here in town, going from ABA to NBA. But along the way, um, getting to see other leagues start up, like the USFL, when we had the San Antonio Gunslinger, that's still one of my favorite times I've ever had with sports because I was young at the time, the players are young at the time, we're all about the same age, we'd all hang out together. It was just a fun time. Now you morph that into what the Spurs are doing, getting to see guys like David Robinson get drafted and come to San Antonio, Tim Duncan, and the resulting five championships. The first one I was shocked, I could tell you that. I was walking down from the press area to the court thinking the Spurs were going to lose game five in 99 because they were down. Only to see Avery Johnson hit the baseline jumper and then Latrell Sprewell go down and miss the shot. And you look up on the scoreboard, oh, I'm like, the Spurs just won. <laughs> it's their first ever championship. And the reaction that occurred after that to me was just unbelievable. I mean, we're just, I think we're all kind of just in the clouds because none of us, including the team, was expecting, I thought, to win that night. And as far as the future is concerned, I think it's very bright. You know, oftentimes when you, San Antonio would talk to different teams and everything. Everybody would, you know, talk about the television market. You know, your market's just not big enough. Well, it is now. You know, we're 31, and I guarantee you within a year we're going to be in the top 30. And not too long after that, we're going to be pretty high 25, I think, when it gets down to it, because the population is growing at just such a, a rate because a lot of people, obviously, from California are moving to Texas. But San Antonio is just a, a gym because the cost of living is great. But as the population increases, your television market grows. So now those excuses are over. And I think, again, if we expand and be, expand the Alamo Dome, make it bigger, better at some point, we will get an NFL team here. And I hope I'm around to see that. I would like to be around to see that. I've seen everything else so far. I would like to see that happen. And I would love to share that with you. Greg says it, so it will be. <laughs> Is that how it works? I, I think so. That's what I've come to understand. <laughs> Outside with live cam, uh, we warmed up about a degree, but still got dense fog out there that is becoming more and more widespread by the minute it seems. Today's time lapse paints a very gray 
and eventually a very damp picture by this afternoon. 64 was our high temperature. That was in the one o'clock hour today. We've been cooler than that for the rest of the day uh, and as kind of damp and gloomy as it's been today, only a trace of rain at the airport. So these next couple of days really not going to do much for us in terms of rainfall, even though it will seem like there's just kind of a constant steady light rain out there. Here's a current look at visibility. Everyone in and around the metro area is below a mile. Most of us down closer to a quarter of a mile. We'll take a look at a now expanded dense fog advisory and take you through your Sunday once again coming up in just a couple minutes. So driving in this type of weather we were talking about it earlier, it is wet, so you have to be careful on the roads, but that windshield wiper is yeah. so annoying because mine <laughs> started squeaking because it's not quite raining hard enough to actually get it going full blast. That was my yeah. situation today driving all over town. Yeah, I feel you. I, I was getting way more annoyed than I should have been. I, yeah, it's that weird, like you can't find the right speed, yeah. and if you just have it off, then you've got to kind of hit it every few Exactly. Time. And we're going to do the same thing tomorrow, so get ready for that. Yeah, not the prettiest weekend, that's for sure. Uh, clearing won't really take place until very early on Monday morning, so uh, get ready for another kind of gloomy day tomorrow. Out there, yes, it is foggy. Uh, air temperature is 60, dew point is 59. We've got light winds, good recipe for some fog. Now, something I want to mention heading into tomorrow. Uh, here's today's pollen count. Mold was moderate, mountain seed are high. So I think we'll kind of see those roles become reversed tomorrow with all the moisture today that should hopefully wash out some of the mountain cedar, but mold could see a nice uptick heading into tomorrow just because we've got all the moisture, uh, very light rain and drizzle around. So something to keep in mind uh, earlier this afternoon, it was very hard to detect anything on radar because that rain, that drizzle was so light, very hard for radar to see. And now we're starting to pick up, pick up on some slightly heavier shower activity, but this is still some very, very light shower activity, mainly east of San Antonio and 35. So we're going to continue to see these very light showers pace through tonight and through at least the first half of the day tomorrow with even some lingering sprinkles into tomorrow afternoon and evening. But even when you zoom out, very hard to see uh, those very light showers there. So futurecast heading into the overnight hours keeps us cloudy, foggy, with drizzle and some light scattered showers around. And that's how things will stay, I think, through the first part of the day tomorrow, certainly through lunchtime. Now, as we get into the afternoon, notice off to the west and well to the south, south of Catula, down closer to Laredo. Our forecast models want to try to clear out some of this cloud cover. A few of our far southwesternmost counties may see some sun tomorrow, uh, but the majority of us will be locked into the clouds again all day tomorrow. Uh, but as we head into the afternoon and evening, I do think some of the drizzle will start to let up just a bit. We'll see our cloud heights raise just a little bit, so that should take some of the drizzle away. But I certainly can't rule out some lingering light showers and a few sprinkles into tomorrow afternoon and evening. Things start to improve as we get into early Monday morning. We're going to have a Pacific cold front move through very late tomorrow night. This could produce some rumbles of thunder, I think, up closer to the Austin area and then points north. I'm not counting on any storms in and around San Antonio tomorrow night through early on Monday with this boundary coming through. Certainly a couple more isolated showers possible through dawn on Monday. Then that will continue to work off to our east by 9 a.m. We're seeing plenty of sun here uh, and by the afternoon, even our easternmost counties will see some sunshine on Monday. We'll also see humidity drop in a very nice way on Monday. Until then, another gray, gloomy day tomorrow. I think the messiest or what may seem like the rainiest part of the day tomorrow will be the first part of the day through lunchtime or early afternoon. But I mentioned all of this very light rain is not going to add up to much at all. If you're lucky, you may see see a little bit more than a tenth of an inch of rain, but a lot of us will probably see just a few hundredths of an inch of rain through Sunday. So dense fog advisory has been extended now. Some of our southern and southeastern most counties. This will go through 9 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Fog certainly could be dense in spots, could even be dense and widespread through early tomorrow morning. So if you do need to get out uh, late tonight, early tomorrow, just make sure you take it slow on the roads and use those low beams. Here's how your temperatures play out through early tomorrow, upper 50s low 60s. It will be warmer tomorrow afternoon. More of us climb into the 70s, but we will be stuck under those clouds. Very nice weather. More spring like weather returns by early next week. Guys, we deserve it after the drizzle. Yes. Mm -hmm.
Longhorn's new head coach looking to fill out his coaching staff. Yeah, Steve Sarkeesian has a head coaching experience in college football, but most recently he worked as an assistant for Nick Saban. So when it came to hiring his staff at Texas, what lessons did he take from Nick Saban? And right here in town, Cody O'Hara was money for Taft in the clutch. Coming up. Friday, Texas Longhorns head football coach Steve Sarkeesian announced his nearly completed football staff of nine assistant coaches and a director of football performance. His staff features 180 years experience coaching in college, 93 bowl games, seven national championship games with six national title wins. Friday, when he met with the media, Sark was asked what did he learn from Alabama's Nick Saban that could be applied to this coaching search. Hire the best coaches, hire the best people for the job. And it doesn't always have to be a tie to me, somebody I worked with. It doesn't necessarily even have to be a tie to somebody else on staff. Uh, if they're really good for the job, if they're really qualified, if they fit the parameters of the things that you're looking for, those are the people you should hire. Sark will hire Montana State's head coach Jeff Choate as inside linebackers coach to finalize his roster. This after things fell through with Mike Stoops. District races are heating up in girls basketball, none tighter than in District 29-6A. Two of the top teams meeting at Northside Sports Gym, 6-2 Harlan facing 8-3 Taft. Raiders led 23-20 in halftime and they open it up thanks to the play of senior Shayla Day Day. Here she runs the break to perfection and finishes with the sweet Euro step lay-in. Timeout Hawks. Taft leads 31-24. Harlan responds. Freshman Emma Flores forces the steal and gets it ahead to Jada Mangum and she puts it up and in, count it and one. Hawks pull back within three. Let's head late to the let's head to the fourth quarter now. Sorry, Harlan ties it up. Ariel Gordon fights for the rebound and gets the runner to fall. Timeout Taft number tied at 43. Now both teams trade buckets. Taraja Thacker gonna spin in the paint, gets it to rattle in. She led the Raiders with 19. They lead by two, but Harlan ties the game again at 55 with a pair of free throws with 25 seconds to go. So with the game on the line, the Raiders swinging around the perimeter to Cody O'Hara and the junior drains the baseline jumper. All kinds of cool, two over four points, and they come at the biggest moment. Harlan's final shot is no good, and the Raiders celebrate a hard fought victory, 57-55. It feels like a dream. Some, yeah, I would say my teammates would pinch me and wake me up, but it was it was it was amazing. Uh, I was just stressing out, frustrated. I'm glad my team pulled through. We've been working together as a team. I think we have a strong bond together. Um, we're just we're all friends, good 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 with each other. Just we like uh, we just know each other very well, and we, we know each other how we play. Taffle face Warren on Tuesday night at Harlan District Gym. Tip is scheduled for 7.30. St. John Paul, the second Catholic high school, is looking to win back-to-back -back state championships. Last season, the Guardians went 16-1 overall and 12-0 in district. They won 14 straight to end the season, capped off by winning the TAPS Division III state championship for the first time in program history. This season, they're 7-1 and one playing some great football, knowing every single team is trying to knock them off. The pressure is on, which motivates them to win. And now we're um, now that we have a lot more pressure, it's a it's a little harder definitely, but um, I think it's a good challenge. A little bit of pressure, but like good pressure. We want to win and try to keep our state title. John Paul too is a great shot to repeat, thanks in part to Emily Rompel, who's nearing 100 career goals. Amazing. We go one on one with the junior forward tomorrow night on Instant Replay. We'll look forward to it. Thank you, Larry. You got it. Coming up, you've seen memes all over social media, and now a sitting Bernie can be yours to wear, and it's all for a great cause. We're going to tell you something good next.